Good morning to you. It's good to see you. It is exactly 8 a.m. and that tells you that you are in time for your world. My name is Winnie Lubembe and as always we bring you conversations that matter. And today on the show we'll be focusing on protests right here in the country and we'll be looking at the right to protest as enshrined in Article 37 of the Constitution and of course we'll be dissecting and digging deeper into the same. The biggest question that I have this morning is uh, how efficient are protests right here in the country? Because again, protests are not a new phenomenon. It's not unique to the country. Um, over the world, uh, in a few years back, we have seen so many countries actually engaging in protests. But really, how efficient are they? That is what we want to understand uh, this morning right here on the show. Because according to Amnesty International, protest is an invaluable way to speak truth to power and throughout history, Protests have been the driving force behind some of the most powerful social movements, exposing injustice and abuse, demanding accountability, and inspiring people to keep hoping for a better future. But unfortunately, these precious rights are under attack and must be protected from those who are afraid of change and want to keep us uh, divided, all right? That is what Amnesty says. So today, we'll be delving deeper into the critical issues surrounding protests right here in the country, the police conduct, and the recommendations are outlined in the Death, Blood, and Tears report. So you want to stick around until the end of the show. It's going to be an amazing, amazing conversation uh, this morning right here on Your World. But remember, you can be part of the show. Feel free to engage with us on X, and that is at NTV Kenya, as well as on Facebook. And remember to tag me as well on X, and that is at Lubembe underscore and we also have a team from Imbli. We were talking about this earlier on before we came on, on set. I was saying it's not I M L U, okay? It is Imbli, <laughs> right? And right on my immediate left, we have Isabella Obara, who's a technical lead, litigation and legal advice from Imbli. Good to have you this morning. For and just me, in case someone nice is wondering, it is the Independent Medical Legal Unit. Please. All right, you'll be telling us more, uh, you know, about the same as we continue with the conversation, especially the litigation aspect. Right. Um, and especially during protests, okay? okay. Uh, and we also have Wangeshi Grace uh, Kahuria, who is the executive director, again, independent medical legal mm -hmm. unit. So that is really good to have you this morning. Thank you for having you us. You look really. lovely, both thank of you. you. Thank you, thank I you. I mean, <laughs> listen, okay. <laughs> uh, and of course, we also have Dr. Davji Atela, who's a Secretary General KMPDU. He's getting set uh, to join us in the conversation. But before we have Dr. Uh, Davji, let's just start with understanding standing in blue. Yeah. Who is in blue? What do you do? And why do you factor in this conversation this morning? Let's start with you, Angeshi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Winnie. And good morning, uh, everyone watching us. Uh, IMLU is an independent medical legal unit. IMLU, not IMLU. <laughs> we are a health governance and human rights organization right. that focuses on the prevention and elimination of torture, mm -hmm. and especially state-led or duty-bearer-led torture. Mm -hmm. um, we are very big on uh, documentation, forensic documentation of torture cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus on ensuring that um, we work with duty bearers to ensure that we meet uh, and are aligned to the international instruments, mm -hmm. the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that uh, positions the protection of human rights and dignity. Mm -hmm. Um, the important thing to note is that um, we miss out on the value of participation and democracy All right. when we curtail protests because they are an essential component mm -hmm. of the element of participation mm -hmm. and democracy. Okay. And we'll be speaking towards that. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and I'm really keen on the prevention and elimination aspect yes. Um, yes. of the same, which I'd want you to comment a little bit uh, about Isabella, but also talk a little bit about the Article 37 oh, okay. <laughs> of the Constitution, yeah. which forms the basis of our conversation this morning. Well, when we talk about prevention and elimination, what we are trying to tell you is that 
we understand the dynamics of torture. Yeah. So it, it's critical for us to note that when we speak of torture, we are referring to the UNCAT, United Nations Convention Against Torture. Mm -hmm. Now, torture is not what we ordinarily, you know, think of yeah. in the, you know, just the layman sense of, of the, of the yeah. term. Okay. What we mean is that you have been violated either physically or mentally mm -hmm by an officer in their official capacity. When they say an officer, we mean a public officer. Mm -hmm. So ordinarily, when you hear that, you then relate Imlu quickly to police officers. Mm -hmm. But police officers are not the only public officers that we have. Yeah. So if you are a public officer, as defined by the Public Officers Act, mm -hmm. and then you injure someone, either physically or mentally, in that sense, it becomes a case of torture. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing we also miss out is the fact that um, you don't need to do it uh, by yourself. Mm -hmm. You could instruct. So if, if that ac activity or action then takes place under the acquiescence of the state mm -hmm. or through the instruction of a person of power, right. then it also becomes a case of torture. Mm -hmm. So we have very several examples. Um, you know, sometimes in the villages where we have chiefs who have, you know, their boys yeah. that they work with and you'd say, oh, you know, he's not an officer, mm -hmm. but he has been instructed and supported by the chief. Yeah. So then that also then becomes a case of torture. I think mm -hmm. that clarity is important because we sometimes tend to think that if, if maybe you and I fight somewhere, then we've tortured each other. No, 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 no. So it has to have those key elements. Okay. So the key elements are that it's a public officer mm -hmm. in the official capacity yeah, right. causing you pain, mm -hmm. mental or physical and then towards uh, with a given intent. Okay. So having said that, then when we talk about prevention, we look at issues of policies and, and, and the guardrails that can be available to ensure that that particular you know, act, action does not happen. Mm -hmm. So ideally, we precipitate change through the numbers that we ordinarily have, okay. and we look at the trends that are available to tell us where we need to go, mm -hmm. and also to look at the laws that cover that particular aspect mm -hmm. and advice accordingly. Are they working? Are they not working? Do we need to then, you know, amend and so on and so forth? Yeah. My biggest question is, has this happened? Because over time we still see protests, right? We still see cases of torture. Right. Um, so, so the biggest uh, question is then, what is the biggest hurdle? Because the laws are there, right? Mm -hmm. um, again, legal thresholds as far as really what qualifies protest and peaceful protest oh, in yes. this manner, what we're talking yeah. about today. Yes. Yeah. But still, we're seeing cases of torture. We're still right. uh, seeing um, cases of you know, people losing their lives. Yeah. Um, so what then, what, where are we losing, you know, when it comes to the same? But before you comment on the same, can we <laughs> speak yes. to Dr. Davji, uh, his final here, Secretary General, uh, KMPDU. Good to have you this morning. You. How are you? Uh, you still have your <laughs> yeah, still have yes, yeah. Yes, How yes. are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, I mean, first of all, can we just talk about the, the, the recent uh, protests by doctors? And then we'll look at the trends uh, in just a moment. Um, but we've had protests over time, the cost of living, and then we had femicides, and now we have uh, we had doctors uh, protesting. Can we go back to what exactly happened? Because, um, I mean, I was following through strike notice, and then protests, and then all of a sudden you were injured uh, during the protest. What, what exactly happened? Because it was meant to be a peaceful protest, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. You see, uh, I will say that um, it, where there's no, in a country where there's no protests yeah. or there's no demonstrations, then there's no democracy. So in this case, uh, we just give a notice for our peaceful procession or demonstration yeah. on 26th of uh, February, and then we were to, proce uh, to proceed on 29th. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we, ask, we always ask for security from the police and notify them of this process. Yeah. So what they always respond is just to say received in the, in the notices. Mm -hmm. But then on this day, when you are demonstrating from Kenyatta National Hospital coming down to Ministry of Health, there was no police officer. Mm -hmm. So it was largely peaceful. It was about 700 uh, uh, doctors. Okay. There was nobody. There was peace. We were actually arranging ourselves in mm -hmm. the process. When we reached the Ministry of Health, then we went in and had a meeting with the the representative of the ministry. And then after that, when we came out, now we found a battalion of police. And then the uh, deputy OCS from uh, Capitol Hill told me that they were instructed earlier to come and disperse us before we started. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he didn't take the instructions. But now, if we proceed with, to go to the Ministry of Health, then he will take us out. He's not going to allow it. Yeah. We told him, but this is very clear. The notice was very clear. We were to be at the ministry and then proceed to Treasury because that's where the funds are. Mm -hmm. They say, you try and see. So when we moved around from the from Afia House, mm -hmm. just about uh, one kilometer, uh, about 800, 500 meters down, mm -hmm. the police went around with their cars. They 
came out of the car and then they loaded uh, one of the guns with tear gas. Mm -hmm. When he just, canister, when he just, it was about 20 meters actually from me and we were in a front line, mm -hmm. they sh it just shot directly. Mm -hmm. So in fact, it was almost eating my forehead. I had to just bend down. So that's what he did. And the same person who had warned us. So because I, it hit me and I got up, I collapsed mm -hmm. unconsciously, then the guys held me, started bleeding. Mm -hmm. That's when now they retreated. But they didn't stop uh, firing the, at, the, at the other doctors because mm -hmm. we had others who also were injured in, the, in that fracas. So largely from that incident, I came to realize that peaceful protests are turned violent by the police okay. in many instances when they come in. And this was not the first time. I remember also in 2022 when we were protesting against uh, Kenyatta National Hospital because they had not complied to the court orders that was restating doctors. Mm -hmm. The police came to Kenyatta National Hospital and, 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 and all of us were arrested. Yet we had given sufficient notice. Yeah. Again, uh, I think the, the other time also when you we were pr protesting to have the government pay fees, they are, actually most, most, most people were injured at that time also. Mm -hmm. That was also 2023. Mm -hmm. So it just after this incident of me being shot last, last month, that has made it easy for us now to demonstrate. I think now that blood probably that, and the, the way people actually acted on it, mm -hmm. now we've been really demonstrating. And I think what has been happening is that sometimes you find people who are not part of the demonstration coming in, mm -hmm. that are planted in. Yeah. Like today we have a demonstration, mm -hmm. yes. And, and that is partly what, what again, I was going to ask. Um, at no single point do we ever hear, we're going to cause chaos, we're going to cause fracas, right? All this time, we always hear peaceful protest, peaceful march, the right to picket, the right to demonstrate, and all those things. And then somewhere along the line, something mm. just happens, mm. and what was meant to be a peaceful protest mm. turns into mm. chaos. Yeah. So why? W what usually happens and what are some of these trends that you have noticed over time, yeah. especially as far as protests, yeah. uh, you know, are concerned here in the country? Because a lot of people, when you hear protests, yes, you go in the kazi, businesses will close, because yeah. people are scared, yeah. chaos mm -hmm. will erupt at yeah. some point. Yeah. So where do we always lose it, you right. know, from the start of the protest yeah. up until chaos right. erupts? Yeah. Windy, that's, that's an important question. Yeah. And allow me to start by explaining the why mm -hmm. protests. Okay. Protests are a way of expression. People gather to express themselves, okay. either towards calling out an injustice mm -hmm. or demanding accountability yeah. or asking for change, mm -hmm. that something is not working. Okay. Now, how do you get your voice heard as a citizen of this great land of ours? Mm -hmm. It's only through either through your vote or through your representatives, mm -hmm. government representatives, or directly voicing yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is where the right to protest comes in. Right. It is a fundamental democratic human right. Mm -hmm. There is provision for in the constitution and all the legal instruments that we've spoken about. Mm -hmm. And so when people gather, they don't gather just for the sake of gathering. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have spontaneous protests because something has happened, an injustice has happened. Yeah. People gather and they call out. You know, someone has been hit, uh, you know, the police are conducting a, a security measure, mm -hmm. Some they have acted on, you know, something and somebody is down on the ground. Mm -hmm. People gather to protest that injustice, that, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But then we have the planned protests mm -hmm. where you've gathered, there's a leader, it's organized, mm -hmm. you have provided for the, um, the, the given uh, notification, yeah. which is normally three days up to 14 days. Mm -hmm. So you, you've, you've expressed that we're going to be conducting this protest. We will march from point A to B. This is the route. It's actually structured. Mm -hmm. And so there is a given fundamental human right and I want to emphasize on yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So when you go onto the streets mm -hmm. and you want to voice to the duty bearer mm -hmm. and say we are bringing this petition mm -hmm. so that you correct or you take accountability yes. for something mm -hmm. they need to listen. Mm -hmm. And so when people gather and then uh, there's panic because what the police are supposed to do, and this is what is uh, provided for, mm -hmm. is actually to accompany the process. Yeah. yeah? There are communication channels that are defined, mm -hmm. that if this is happening, we know the leaders of the protest, mm -hmm. there's communication, yeah. you accompany, you give security, mm -hmm. you protect the citizens. Mm -hmm. But now, when you curtail this, 
and then you use force. Mm -hmm. Because actually even when, when the protests begin, people begin to get agitated, there are defined mechanisms mm -hmm. of managing crowd control. Yes. And this is provided for in the Public Order Management Act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there's use, you know, dialogue, negotiation, mm -hmm. calm the crowd, mm -hmm. you manage, it is provided for. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is there a gap in understanding? Is there a gap in enforcing this? Right. Is it a way, a culture we have developed mm -hmm. as a country? Yeah. yeah? So or those is are it all of, all of the or above? Or is it all those, you know? <laughs> I yeah. want to see yeah. from, and, and Rageshi, you've said it very, very well. Yeah. yeah. And I'll pick from the culture. Mm -hmm. Sitting on this panel with Dr. Dabji here just reminds me of how um, bad it looked for us as Kenyans outside there that this is how we deal with protests. To just contextualize what what that was. Mm -hmm. So I'm just listening to what he's saying and we can tell that from the current laws, yeah, yeah. that particular protest met all the key ingredients or requirements. Okay. First, there was a notification, right. right? And and a notification is simply to say, hey, we are going to do uh, this route. Mm -hmm. We are going to have this number of people. Right. This is the uh, maybe the, the background of the protest and this is what we're trying to achieve period. Okay. Yours as the officer commanding station who has been notified mm. is to simply respond and say we are able to support you with security right. or we are, we are not able to maybe proceed with this because that particular venue or road that you are trying to use for the procession mm -hmm. has already been booked by someone else. Okay. It is not yours to say no. Uh, no particular officer right. uh, on the face of this land can say no to a, to a protest. Okay. So ideally it is yours to guide. Mm -hmm. Now when you get to the date mm. that you have set to you know undertake the protest, as an organizer of your stature that carry, mm -hmm. then you simply make sure that you have the traffic marshals and okay. that your people are simply, you know, in line with what it is that they are supposed to do. So that you also don't curtail the enjoyment of other person's rights. That's true. So if, yeah. you, if you have a business, yes. if you want to drive. Yeah. If, so it, it is just that everyone enjoys. So even protesters have mm -hmm. obligations. Mm -hmm. and, and from what we saw is that they met their obligation, that they, mm -hmm. pro, they had their procession as per the route they indicated, okay. and they go to where they were going and they were proceeding. Mm -hmm. Now, I wrote something. Okay. I was interested in your choice of words, Dr. You said that he was instructed to come and disperse. Mm. I actually wrote the instructed mm. part <laughs> because I, you I also mentioned instructed at some point yeah. um, when we started the show, but yes. What mm -hmm. happened should haunt us as Kenyans deeply yeah. and should worry us. Okay. Because anyone who was maybe going around their business, because these were not people who were rioting, yeah. would have also gotten injured. Mm -hmm. You know how dangerous that is. It could yeah. be you, it could be me. True. Yeah. Now, instructed to come and disperse is not something we need to condone. Mm. There are only two instances in which you can disperse a crowd, All right. right? The first one being that there was no notification. You have confirmed that you sent a notification that was received. Okay. So, so that we, we've done away with. Yeah. The second one is that when an officer sees that there is apparent or imminent danger, mm. I mean, police bear the immense responsibility of deciding what is imminent danger, what yes. is apparent danger, yeah. and in that very moment, they are also then supposed to decide what use of force should be applied mm -hmm. and how appro app uh, appropriate. Yeah. So if it is proportionate, yeah. and that has to be done in what? A split of a second. Right. So we understand that immense responsibility. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are not, you know, we are alive to that fact. Yeah. However, you cannot walk into a protest that you first was you were not supporting in terms of offering security or yeah, guidance and simply purport to be instructed okay so so there is an illegality there that needs to be looked into okay however i want to tie in with what wangeshi said that there's a culture mm -hmm. i think our culture is to criminalize protests mm -hmm. Yeah, so that if a child today hears that there's mandamano tomorrow, yeah. if you wake them up, they'll say, Mani, no, I'm not going to school, going there's to school. mandamano. Yeah. Yeah. And That's you see, true. protests are not evil, mm -hmm. right? Ideally, Throughout they the world, should not. They should not be evil. Yeah. But we have made protests to become one of the most fragile contexts mm. in which we operate in. Yeah. That if someone along this, along this road knows there's a protest, they'll close their shop. Okay. That should not happen. Yeah. Everyone must enjoy their right mm -hmm. as they should mm -hmm. with the organizers and the protesters and and the duty bearers mm -hmm. doing what they're supposed to do okay now the public order act i, I just want to finish yeah. because it's important for anyone who's organizing mm -hmm. and anyone who's receiving a notification yeah. to understand mm -hmm. yours as an organizer yeah. is to make sure that your people know exactly the routes they're supposed to be using mm -hmm. that there'll be no there'll not be any van be any vandalism mm -hmm. that you'll have traffic marshals and that you'll make sure that you do that between 6 a.m and 6 p.m mm -hmm. you as 
an organizer. Yeah. Now, the duty bearer being the state, yours then is to receive the notification and respond yeah. in about 24 to 48 hours mm -hmm. and offer the security. And then remember that you can also have a role in mm -hmm. turning this protest into a riot. Yeah. You have to understand that. Yeah. If you are dispersing, what has warranted that dispersal? Mm -hmm. There is a very serious, vague threshold of dispersing a protest and what is an illegal protest. Mm -hmm. But as a trained officer, yeah. with the current internationally applicable laws, yeah. you should be able to discern and know when yeah. to disperse a protest mm -hmm. and what is a riot and, and be, differentiate between what is a, a riot, riot and what is a protest. And, 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 a protest. And, and, and I think one of the things that would also need to speak to is, and, and I'm happy that you brought it out, is, is the issue of responsibility. Um, but we'll also speak on conduct because we must, uh, I mean, we cannot forget the fact that we also have, you know, law enforcers, we have police officers mm -hmm. who have lost their lives, who have been injured, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during protests as well. And that is, they have been, you know, attacked mm. so when you come because it's, it's very easy for us to point fingers and say you know law enforcement police officers all those things dr damji said most of the time it is the police officers who cause yes. chaos i mean they're not here to <laughs> to yeah. to reply to yeah. the same but i think we'll also you know address that but dr damji it's and especially for doctors because you're a doctor right it's, it's not a new phenomenon. I remember in 20, was it in 2017, 2016. where there was those, right? Those, yes. those, there was another protest. And I remember I covered that. Uh, and, and Dr. Omo Lugo was, again, was, you know, as well injured during the, the, the protest. Um, they were arrested uh, and, and, you know, they were taken into remand. And, and someone was asking, is, is it the only way for you to be heard? Have you sought other avenues, you know, meetings here, sit downs here? And I know that has happened uh, over time because the issues still remain the same. There's the interns issue, there's the payment issues, there's the recruitment issue, still remain the same over the years. But here we are, 2024, we're still seeing doctors uh, protesting. You know, we've come to realize that uh, doctors are just workers like every other Kenyan. And, and therefore, we tried very much to use all the available instruments mm -hmm. to uh, advocate for our plights. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we start giving our, before we go for any industrial actions, we give no, we, we, we try to engage on dialogue. Mm -hmm. In this case, if the, this collective bargaining agreement was signed in 2017, mm -hmm. we have since, uh, from that time to date, the basic salary component was not implemented at mm -hmm. all. We had agreement on the payment of interns and the timely, timely posting. But consistently, there's been, we have to, have to always force the ministry to post them and what will be the mechanism is just to make somebody in the office there as mm -hmm. cabinet secretary or mm -hmm. anybody appointed that we are not happy and the easiest way to do it not going not going on strike mm -hmm. is to protest and say no we want this thing sorted out yeah. <coughs> so that's what we've been doing right. but now this year we realized that it was much more serious there's this violation of collective bargaining agreement mm -hmm not only for delayed posting of the, of the medical interns for two years or three years, but their salary also has been reduced by 90%. Mm -hmm. So you see, now it became, it, was became more, it was becoming more serious. Then the second thing is that the CBA, the, the, the basic salary for the doctors also had not been paid. So yes, we've gone on strike. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you go on strike and you stay at home, it doesn't send the message. We have to realize that our plight is the plight of workers. So you must dramatize this, you must illustrate this. Mm -hmm. And then the easiest way to do this is to demonstrate mm -hmm. and to uh, take the petitions. We've done this last week and the other week, and even today, mm -hmm. we'll be having a very uh, mega, pro uh, me we call it a grandmother of, of protests. <laughs> of all protests. <laughs> because this now, it, it was uh, quite uh, alarming for doctors when they realized that the, the, the wages of this medical interest that they've been handling for seven years is what has caused the, uh, the, the, the wage bill to balloon. Mm -hmm. So we want to demonstrate that, no, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. We have to be paid what was agreed and what you've always been earning. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are going to, uh, to protest and demonstrate. Mm -hmm. We gave the note, we gave the notice last week okay. for this. I think it's, it's going all the medical students across the country, all mm -hmm. the doctors and all the consultants. Mm -hmm. Because essentially what this means is that if the government succeeds mm -hmm. in violating a collective bargaining agreement, mm -hmm. because these doctors are going to be medical interns, the next year we'll have a doctor being employed at a third the rates of this do this, yeah. these doctors. Mm -hmm. We're going to have our non-practice allowance being removed from our law, for, because the uh, uh, Salary and Military Commission tried to move it last year year mm -hmm. we're going to have pay cuts and therefore we will be the guinea pig of the whole process mm -hmm. and therefore, so that's why the, the, this protest are very important and we have to in fruit because again like i said it's not new um, <coughs> again we need to go on a break but I'll, I'll want you to respond to it very quickly um because and 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 then there were 
talks, right? There were negotiations. So doctors were invited into the table. Let's talk and see what we can do. But now what we're seeing is a hard stance, you know, between the government. The president actually yesterday said, Atuna pesa, okay? And the doctors are saying, I don't know going back to work. And then there's also threats. Um, the way if you don't go back to work, then you'll be sad. So has it borne any fruits? Is there <coughs> the, the, It doesn't always bore fruits. Yeah. yeah they, and it, that's why uh, we have to... Uh, illustrate our plight and we must make the public conscious of what we are going through. Okay. We are going through a salary reduction amidst this uh, uh, cost, I increased cost of living. Yeah. And it's a big problem for us. It will both fruit because we will not go back to work unless these yeah. issues are sorted out, mm -hmm. unless we know that we are protected. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the threats come out from different governments and different leaders that we keep asking. Mm -hmm. If you feel like that the doctors striking and demonstrating for their rights mm -hmm. is something that you can threaten them and fire them, just proceed. Mm -hmm. Because you can't fire all doctors across the country. It's not an issue of one doctor okay. in Kenya. It's an issue of all the fraternity. All the, yeah. And at the end of the day, you will also want to employ the doctors. We have seen counties that try to fire doctors like Laikipia. That governor went home. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the population, the, the people of Laikipia suffered until the new government came in, mm -hmm. though they were arrested by the courts. Kirinyaga County, as we speak, is, is a deathbed for patients mm -hmm. because they fire doctors and it's... Is, in a sense, it becomes an hostile environment. The same doctors that you're going to hire are members of the union. Yeah. So one thing that is very clear that as the way protests are constitutional rights, is the same way strikes are constitutional rights, mm -hmm. is the same way we have right to life. Mm -hmm. And therefore, whenever people are not in the hospitals, mm -hmm. it is fully the government that has, the, has, has relegated its duty right. uh, to offer services. Okay. Yes. Can we go on a break uh, on that note? But when we come back, again, like I said, we really need to interrogate the, the Article 37 uh, part of the same because we understand these laws are there. We, we understand the rights and all those things. But still, somewhere along the line, uh, something just happens, you know, high levels of impunity. We're seeing people losing their lives. Uh, we're seeing extrajudicial uh, killings and executions as well. So then what is it that we need to do to ensure that the next Next time we hear of protests, people are not scared to go to work and all those things, but also the protesters can also work with law enforcement agencies to ensure that really the whole aspect of peace uh, is maintained throughout the process. Of course, we'll be interrogating that after the break. Stay with us, but if you have a question or comment, feel free to engage with us at NTV at Kenya, both on X and on Facebook at Tag Me as well at Lubembe underscore BDC. See you after the break. All right, welcome back to the show. The show is Your World, and just in case uh, you are tuning in right now, today our focus is uh, on the whole aspect as far as protests are concerned. And we're talking about protests here in the country. We're looking at the trends. We're looking at uh, the gaps. We're looking at what are some of the solutions that are available, especially when we're talking about peaceful protests, but somewhere along the line, just chaos erupts. Uh, we spoke about um, culture when before we went on a break where we said, in the country, when someone hears the word protest, eh, we, we, we are scared because somewhere along the line, uh, chaos erupts. And, and of course, the biggest question is really how efficient are protests, okay? Do we always yield the results that we hope for? Uh, from the protest and what is it or how can uh, protesters work hand in hand with uh, you know law enforcers just to ensure that again peace uh, you know prevails throughout the process so to help us with the conversation this morning we have Wangeshi Grace uh, Kahuria who is the executive director independent medical legal unit that is in blue we have uh, Isabella Obara who's the technical lead litigation and legal advice from in blue as well and we have Dr. Davji Atela who's the secretary general from KMP now, uh, Wangeshi, I'd want you to comment on, uh, again, a little bit about culture in this sense, okay? So we've had a lot of people say, uh, a protest, see protest, kama hakuna chaos, okay? So we have seen um, some organizers also hiring goons, okay, to come into, because the more force we use, uh, the more wataona, this thing is serious, and the more, you know, the will sort of like act, uh, quote unquote. So... Then, of course, chaos erupts. Of course, the law enforcers have to, to act. Sometimes they use excessive uh, forces, uh, force, I mean. Um, and, and, and it's difficult then to differentiate between really who's a peaceful protester yeah. and who 
is a good. Yeah. So can you speak on, on the same, especially yes. this whole aspect about if there's no chaos, then mm. this protest height a bare fruits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. what we expect. Yeah. yeah. This is interesting. In towards the end of January, yeah. we had the femicide protests that were organized countrywide. Yes. You know, multiple protests in the different cities and mm. towns. Yeah. And there was no violence. Okay. Peaceful protests. Mm -hmm. They were managed from point A to point B. Yeah. They delivered their petitions mm -hmm. and uh, things went on. Right. That's an example that actually protests mm -hmm. can be can handled be peaceful. peacefully yeah. to conclusion mm -hmm. without violence. Mm -hmm. But speaking of this culture, which unfortunately we have to be alive to, mm -hmm. uh, it is true because we also have had the same. I yeah. mean, and we are Kenyans to begin with. Mm -hmm. Uh, where protestants have either used, not protestants, sorry, let me correct mm -hmm. that, a few people, yeah. either organizers or others, mm -hmm. have used, unfortunately, the vulnerable youth yeah. to disrupt protests. Mm -hmm. That has happened. Mm -hmm. And now we've had people come in and mingle with protestants and have taken advantage and mm -hmm. there's looting mm -hmm. and there's, uh, you know, destruction of property yeah. and, 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 and even life, you yeah. know. So that has happened. But does that mean that then we condone, we, we stop and curtail the use of protests as a right to democracy? Mm -hmm. No. It should be find out why are we having uh, ri rioters, because we call them rioters at yes. that point. Yeah. Why are we having rioters disrupt a peaceful protest? Mm -hmm. What is the mechanism of crowd control of ensuring that the organizers know their people, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So, but just to, to speak to Kenyans a little bit here, mm -hmm. let's not also contribute to the negation of a process because of our behavior okay. so we also have to take responsibilities mm -hmm. and we did say that uh, protestants also have obligations Absolutely. so obligation yes. is peaceful demonstration right. peaceful assembly mm -hmm. it's actually called my right to to voice to expression but mm -hmm. in a peaceful way mm -hmm. so that i'm also not impacting yeah. on the right of another That's i'm true. not negating the right of the vendor mm -hmm. of the person who's opening their business and they depend on this business mm -hmm. We have seen businesses completely destroyed. So that's that. But there's still the state responsibility mm -hmm. because the fundamental right mm -hmm. of protection, yeah. the responsibility of protection is on law enforcement. That's true. So we, we cannot argue about that. Mm -hmm. So what is the state doing to ensure that the citizens mm -hmm. are protected, both those mm -hmm. who are in the protest yeah. and also those going on yeah, about their, their, their business, yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. that, that, that has to be managed. Yeah. And uh, we'll be speaking to our experiences uh, because yeah. we have documented yeah. what happened last year mm -hmm. over 22 mm -hmm. different protests. Absolutely. So we have a lot of experience mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, statements from mm -hmm. people who engaged. And, and, and we'll come to you to, to, yeah. to, to discuss the same. Um, can we talk about then the legal aspects of the same? Um, where, so someone is injured, for example, let's take uh, Dr. Davji's um, uh, experience, right? So he knows the person who attacked, uh, attacked him, right? But then there's so many other people who have been injured, yes. unfortunately lost their lives, mm -hmm. um, you know, family members still seeking justice up until this point. Yeah. So then what is the legal, if someone decides to go, you know, the legal way, yeah. um, you know, take legal action, yeah. Sometimes you don't know who attacked you, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> most of the time they're masked, they have the helmets, and also you don't really know, yes. um, you know, who, who attacked you. Yeah. So what are some of the steps that people need to take, whether you know the attacker or, yeah. or you don't know? And also, yeah. hey, three questions in one. Uh, also speak on law enforcers who also yes. get injured yeah. during protests because we have rioters yeah. who also attack yeah. uh, the law enforcers. It, it's interesting that we're discussing this uh, when we are aware that Dr. Davji, you're talking about this, that uh, there are certain counties right now that are deathbeds. Yes. So so we are speaking now, but there are people who are maybe losing their lives. Um, so it's, it's not even the best, but we'll yeah. try. Mm -hmm. Now, before we even go to all your questions, yeah. le, le, we need to be clear that mm -hmm. they are good officers. 100%. They have always been yes. there. Yes. All we are seeking to discuss mm -hmm. is the systemic changes that require immediate mm -hmm. restructuring. That's okay. all. Yeah. We, we, we're not, you know, um, sometimes you tend to think that it is an attack to a specific service. Mm -hmm. Certainly not. 
we are simply agitating for systemic changes yeah. towards the training of police officers, towards the capacity building of police officers, mm -hmm. towards telling the state, hey, please provide a broad range of less lethal weapons so that we can differentiate. Okay. You can't provide what they call a Kalashnikov 47, <laughs> Kalashnikov 74 and say that that is yeah. a broad range. Hell no. no. And even when you provide this broad range, mm -hmm. then capacitate this person on how to use them. Okay. In this report, the death, blood, and tears, and I'm going to give you one, and I'd urge any, every other Kenyan to take a to, look at this. Yeah. You don't need to be a legal officer to take a to look at this. That, yeah. This is a, a meticulous report uh, developed by IMLU, launched on the 23rd of February, mm -hmm. 2024, yeah. just discussing the context, the very uh, fragile and, and bad context we saw last year mm -hmm. when we were monitoring the protests. Mm -hmm. um, what we saw here is, one, that you have good examples of mm. protests. Okay. It has been done. Uh, Wangeshi has spoke about the femicide. Yeah. Sometime in 2007, 2008, we saw one, uh, the then acting uh, general service unit mm. superintendent, mm. Mr. Joseph Ngede, mm. who you know, conducted himself in such a way that every other person who looks into protests in Kenya remembers that name very, very well. Yeah. They had dialogues almost four times with armed protesters mm. just trying to tell them, hey, this will not work. Yeah. This is not going to work. This okay. is how we can go about it. Right. So it has been done. Okay. Now what we seek to do is to standardize. So in the event, mm. the, the, the terrible event that you, know, you get into a space where Dr. Davji was, mm. then one of the things that you need to do is to report to a police station. Mm. That in itself has, when we were documenting uh, these cases, yeah. uh, we also saw a challenge there yeah. because the person who has violated you that you know is the same person who's supposed to give you an OB number. True. And in fact, they would, some were kicked out of the police stations. Yeah. Some had to even seek refuge in other areas because then they were being targeted. And then there's also this question of protecting our own. Right. So someone, The you blue know, code of silence. Yes. Or that yeah. we, we encounter that everywhere. Mm. So the first thing that you need to do is to report yeah. and get an OB number. Okay. And we have precedent to show that you need that particular report mm -hmm. so that you create a special relationship between yourself and the state mm -hmm. and they are supposed to investigate and give you a report mm -hmm. once you do that then make sure that you get a medical documentation mm -hmm. and you don't need to be injured physically even mentally there are mm -hmm. psychologists and counselors that mm -hmm. even imlu works with yeah. towards documenting because we know cases of torture are the ones that get you to a place where you're dealing with psychological yeah. effects sometimes even lifelong life injuries, yeah. right? That's true. So yeah. once you document that, then you put your documents together and send a petition to IPOA, the Independent mm. uh, Policing Oversight Authority. Yeah. That particular arm of the state then investigates. It's, it's a civilian oversight authority mm. that has worked well in terms of documenting this particular um, um, violation, mm -hmm. gross human rights violations. Yeah. And they send that to the Director of Public Prosecution mm. towards uh, maybe discussing issues of culpability and maybe recommending charges mm -hmm. uh, of certain officers. Mm -hmm. So that is one route. Mm -hmm. The other route, and I like the, uh, the choice of what you said, sometimes it is difficult to balance. Mm -hmm. We as the independent medical legal unit, especially as reparation practitioners, mm -hmm. also believe that not everyone thinks the litigation mm -hmm. way is justice. Yeah. Yeah. Some will tell you, I simply want to get medical support and counseling, and, and I'll be fine. Yeah. You do not then deny this particular victim or community mm -hmm. their agency to decide what justice is to them. Right. In as much as I'd have file in my belly too, I was here telling the doctor, we need to document you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If he says he does not want, you don't do it. So litigation is not the only aspect mm -hmm. when it comes to maybe just seeking justice. Yeah. Justice looks differently from one victim yeah. or survivor to, to the, the other. other. Okay. And so then you have to balance that. Mm -hmm. Quickly again, if you look at this report, mm -hmm. IMLU um, um, documented mm -hmm. 296 cases of violations. Mm -hmm. Winnie, 296. That's a lot. 29 were children. And this then takes us to what Wangeshi will talk about at some point, mm -hmm. the use of less lethal force. Yeah. You use it in a way that causes maximum injury. Dr. Mm -hmm. here is wearing his cape yeah. still. still so I, I don't even know what that looks like. Yeah. So uh, as possibly when we look into protest, then we need to look at the guidance mm -hmm. on the use of less lethal force mm -hmm. in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Because um, tear gas has killed people. And, and when you take a look at this, you'll see that. Yeah. So in those 22 protests, we saw that um, in as much as we want to say that uh, protesters and rioters mm -hmm. have a certain way of being dealt with, mm -hmm. we need to look into the ways in which we are using force yeah. generally. Yeah. And 
if someone was to say that they are not going to go through the litigation mm -hmm. way, what then happens? But what I've forgotten to tell you is mm -hmm. um, there's the criminal aspect of litigation and the civil aspect of litigation. The yeah. criminal aspect, obviously, is, is, is then taken up by the director of public prosecutions. Mm -hmm. What then IMLU does is it provides you with a counsel to watch brief mm -hmm. and to simply just walk you through the particular process. Okay. We do believe that the state does its job, but then we just simply seek to buttress. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the civil litigation, then we do file uh, constitutional and human rights petitions right. towards the violation of your, your security, mm -hmm. uh, your threat to right to life, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the threat of your freedom from torture and related violations. Okay. So ideally, those are the to us that we can use. Absolutely. Bangeshi, before you speak more on um, on the report, Dr. Davji, um, and, and, and you said you're still, is that happening today? today the grandmother <coughs> of, <laughs> of all protests. Are you scared uh, that what happened um, you know, previously will happen again? No, uh, actually sometimes yeah, when I'm seated, uh, sitting somewhere alone, I will mm. think about it. Okay. Yes. But because of the duty and the work that I have to do, uh, mm. there's nothing really to fear. Mm. Because uh, if it, it, it is me to do it at this time. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we always ready even to give our life for the cause. Mm -hmm. But what he said is very, is very uh, real. That after the incident, we tried to report to the police, okay. uh, to Kilimani Police Station, we went to the mm -hmm. same capital hill. They, they actually chased us away. They said, no, this was an act of accident. That means they had already orchestrated the, the information, the, the message themselves. Okay. So they could not uh, take the report. Mm -hmm. So just through IPO that we're trying to do and now through litigations also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We see a lot of investigations um, happening and then that's it. Okay. Investigations are being done. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. On rare occasions, do we see, uh, you know, someone actually being prosecuted? I think that is why a lot of people would say, you know what, counselling, help me get medical help, and then that's it. Mm. Because I know if I <laughs> take this other route, it will take ages, 10, 15 uh, years later, right. but still nothing um, will be done. So do you think this is one of the things that, you know, discourage a lot of people to seek, um, you know, legal action? And what is it that then needs to be done? I know from the report there are several recommendations, yes. which yeah. we'll talk about, but just yeah. really on yeah. addressing the, the legal yeah. Um, you know, aspect of it. Indeed, that's a key player. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I want to talk about impunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, the level of impunity is too high. Okay. It's just too much. Mm -hmm. And so it discourages people from reporting. Uh, the way you're treated when you go to report your case mm -hmm. uh, has, you know, its own implications. And uh, Isabella just spoke about our experiences okay. and, and witnesses who came and said, I went to report, I was denied an OB mm -hmm. number. An OB number is a right. Okay. It has to be recorded. Yeah. The only way to demonstrate that it was recorded is by having an OB number. Mm -hmm. You cannot start up a case without an OB number. Mm -hmm. But as, as, as Isabella correctly said, most of the survivors don't even want to go the legal way. Yeah. They just want two key things mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. One, an acknowledgement mm -hmm. that I have been violated, okay. that my, my, my right was not protected, was not respected. Mm -hmm. And number two, some level of support where necessary, yeah. especially medical, okay. immediate medical attention. Mm -hmm. We've had people who still have bullets lodged in their bodies. Mm -hmm. We have people with... With, with wounds that have mm. never healed, serious, serious injuries. Yeah. Yeah? We have people who just want for their families to know, you know what, I am going through counseling because I'm telling you, Winnie, the level of trauma is mm. deep. Yeah. Most of the time, survivors are in a near death situation. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine getting out of that. Let's mm -hmm. use the example of the children yeah. whose, who, who's, uh, you know, a canister was mm -hmm. thrown onto them. Yeah. These are children mm -hmm. playing mm -hmm. in a school they didn't have ground. To do with they have zero yeah. to do with, they don't even know about this protest, you know. Yeah. So imagine the, 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 their safety. Mm -hmm. Imagine their mental state. Mm -hmm. Imagine them waking up and going to school. Mm -hmm. It's always, there's always fear. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we say that, um, allow the individuals to have access to, I mean, they, it is their right to have access to services, whatever the service. Okay. And the definition of justice is by the individual. Mm -hmm. So if it means that, yes, the state has acknowledged, and as IMLO, we are really, really pushing and mm -hmm. actually demanding yeah. some level of acknowledgement right. that this happened over this period, mm -hmm. these protests, uh, there was violence during pro protest mm -hmm. X, there was violent, violence during the Mandamanos, yeah. X number 67 people died. Mm -hmm. 
67. Yeah, uh, too, too many, many lives lost yeah. over a period. And this is just one year. We're mm -hmm. not talking about all the other protests. Yeah. We're talking about the documented cases of 2023. 296 people, you know, injures, mm -hmm. injuries, mm -hmm. serious, serious injuries. Mm -hmm. People who will never walk again. We have a child with a hearing uh, impairment right now. She cannot hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, so when we talk about the right to life, yeah. the right to association, mm -hmm. it's also about the right to protect people mm -hmm. from injuries. All right. Yes. Dr. Davji, so how long do you intend for this to go on? the protests because again and i asked you this <laughs> yeah. during break um where and, and acknowledging the <coughs> fact that it is your right yeah. um right um again article 37 <laughs> uh, of the constitution and i'm just i'm just gonna read it for someone who's like hey what is that okay so it says every person has the right to peaceably uh, and unarmed to assemble to demonstrate to picket and to present petitions to public authorities yes. you said you have done all those things, right? Given the notice, all those things, but still there's no acknowledgement, okay? If anything, you are told no. So how long is this uh, intended to go on? Because on the other hand, there are patients, right, who are suffering. Yeah. And I'm going to ask the oath question. Yes. <laughs> Where is that oath by doctors? Um, and, and the people who, innocent Kenyans, right, um, who have nothing to do with what, you know, states versus doctors have absolutely nothing, nothing to do with that, are actually suffering. So when is this, uh, up until what point will you say, you know what, fine, enough is enough? Yeah, I think I'll just first start by this part of the impunity, yeah. uh, for example, of the police and yeah. the brutality that they cause. Sometimes when you're speaking <coughs> for it outside, the experience is very different. But from what I saw last time is that, mm. you know, when you get head injury and then it is, the doctor says it's a, a moderate severe injury, mm. it, it becomes a story. But when you look into it, for example, for my case, mm. where there was internal bleeding, yeah. there's a, a fracture, you end yourself, end up being in HDU for about five days mm -hmm. when they're still monitoring the level of bleeding. Mm -hmm. And then you come out of the hospital, then you have to be... Uh, on anti-conversant, anti-sheezers, because I was get, having when conversion with this. The, the, the police brutality looks different okay. from the person who just sees it. Mm. But sometimes, despite the, uh, the pain or the impact or the brutality, mm. we have to continue. Yeah. Because there's no any other way, for example. Mm. This is just the way that we have to do it. Right. Because, yes, <coughs> there's this concept that there's oath of doctor, oath for doctors. Mm. There's this idea that the doctors are essential service providers. Mm. But look at it here. We are in a country where we have a budget of 1.1 trillion <coughs> into wages. We have, um, the government says 47% of wages, uh, of their budget goes to the wages. Mm. And therefore, when they want to take taking action, the first target is the person they say are essential service providers. Mm. So you really come to wonder that, are you only essential service providers when you are to work mm. and when, it, when on budgets you're not? Then somebody throws in uh, that you have, uh, you have a calling, you need to, you, take, you took an oath, you need to actually see the patient because they're suffering. When the patients, when Kenyans pay taxes, mm -hmm. they don't pay it to the bank accounts of the doctors mm -hmm. or the healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. They pay taxes to the government. Right. And therefore, in Article 43 of the Constitution, it is the responsibility of the government to ensure that there are services. Yes, right. And I must yes. tell you that in the WHO recommendation currently in this country, mm -hmm. the facility to population, we have reached the maximum. Mm -hmm. It means that county governments and national governments have gone into the spree of construction of hospitals, mm -hmm. but they have not considered the need to have medicines in those facilities. Mm -hmm. They've not seen the need to have the health workforce in those facilities. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if a doctor is in the hospital and is not supported, mm -hmm. what I mean by not being supported, that means you don't even have fuel to drive your car to the facility, mm -hmm. or you've gone to work <coughs> and your landlord is calling you for rent, mm -hmm. or, you've, or, or you, this lab coat or this stethoscope, or you being a doctor will not pay the bills. Mm -hmm. You've got to have to be paid wages. Okay for the work that you're doing. So this, uh, it has been a fallacious argument. It has been a, a, a lunatic thought by many people in government that no, because you are a calling, you do not take actions for your plight. Mm. But I'm telling you, until we look doctors, doctors and health workers just as we are, 
as journalists or as, 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 as engineers that we are human beings, all of us, mm -hmm. and we ought to have to pay bills based on the skills that you've learned, then the government can take it seriously. Right. So therefore, any debt that comes out of the strike that we are going or the protests that we are taking on is squarely because government has totally mm -hmm. neglected the plight of the doctors and the healthcare workers right. and actually has, is using them to reduce the wage bill. Mm -hmm. Meaning, and, and in the same context, we are seeing that the new positions that are being created mm -hmm. and being remunerated even on higher scale. Mm -hmm. And this thing, I must say again, is not new. It was well pre-planned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then, my question, still, how long is this, uh, you know? I must now <coughs> put it quite correctly, okay. that doctors are not on strike. Okay. Doctors joined the government that has been striking from, 20, from 2017 and escalated their strikes in 2022 and has increased it twofold uh, last week. We are not on strike. We have joined the government in being on strike. And this is well uh, illustrated when we went to the meeting with government on 27th. Mm -hmm. Of, um, of, Feb of March, in the entire world, there is no day that the government mm -hmm. has walked out of a negotiation table. It was first documented in this country. Mm -hmm. The government or the doctors? It's the government that walked out the of the government, negotiation. Oh, the government walked, walked out. out. It's not the, the doctors who walked yes. out. Okay. The government walked out. Okay. It means that the people that were negotiating with us either were incompetent or lacked capacity to actually help the negotiation. Mm -hmm. And, that's, and, that, and, and, and they, they, were, they were saying, you have to call off the strike before we have the negotiation. It has never happened because the strike is, we are carrying out strike based on the constitutional right that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, the government has not obeyed about six court orders that were ordering them to, mm -hmm. uh, to honor this particular uh, collective bargaining agreement, mm -hmm. uh, to pay the doctor interns the way they should pay them. They have not honored all these, all these court orders. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are on strike, but we don't just want to be at home. Okay. We have energy. We have to exercise it on the streets okay. to show to, to, to make it known and that and that our fight by the way is not for doctors okay. it's for the kenyans why because if these doctors go to the hospitals the uh, 1300 intern doctors mm -hmm. are, are, are employed in the hospitals they're going to see the patients mm -hmm. we are demanding for employment of 10,000 doctors in the next five years mm -hmm. these doctors are not going to treat themselves mm -hmm. they're going to treat the public mm -hmm. and it means that the the, the cost of care mm -hmm is going to reduce. But by the time that you reduce the wages of doctors, it mm -hmm. means that you are promoting privatization of healthcare. Mm -hmm. And it means that the majority of the population will not, will not get the care. Mm -hmm. Doctors are tired of being in the hospitals where you will get a patient, mm -hmm. you want to serve them, but you don't have the drugs, you don't have the equipment to save this patient. Mm -hmm. Instead, you just say, oh, this patient has died. You are only just to confirm that death has occurred. Okay. That's what you don't want to do. Okay, yeah. again. Still on my question before I come to the recommendations from, from uh, the report, right? So we will continue to be on the streets until what? We will continue to be on the street until the government realizes that we need to be in the hospital. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. So then how do... Because we all have specific roles that we play, right? Uh, as Kenyans, we need to understand the responsibility that we bear mm -hmm. when we talk about and think about and our perception really as far as protest is concerned and, mm -hmm. and how we're supposed to conduct ourselves right. during this peaceful protest, okay. right? Yeah. The organizers also have a responsibility to bear. The law enforcement um, has a responsibility to, to bear. Yeah. Uh, CSOs also, you know, have response. So then how do we come together mm. to ensure that the word peace, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> is maintained during uh, protest yes. so that the next time we hear uh, protest, yeah. a child somewhere will say, I'm not going to school yeah. because kuna manda mano, well, or businesses won't close because Ketsa says what yeah. um, businesses lose up over 40,000 shillings every single yes. day, you yes. know, for protest. Well, we, we have a bit of work to do, okay. uh, that's for sure, mm -hmm. but it can be done, right? right? Mm -hmm. If you look at our recommendations, we've looked at the key uh, sectoral players uh, that would, we would like to work with, mm -hmm. and, and the people that we think we are interacting with at most, mm -hmm. and also just calling upon any other person who knows and believes that they can, you know, mm -hmm. uh, give something towards this process. All right. Now, for anyone who's going out today, mm -hmm. And anyone who plans out to go any other time, mm -hmm. you are guaranteed by the law that you are going to be supported and you will enjoy your freedom to uh, picket and to protest. Right. However, 
we have to remember that public order management is not only for the citizens, it's also for the police, yeah. so that we standardize everything. Yeah, there's like As the National Police Service uh, it, Act. Yeah. The National Police Service Act, yeah. uh, Schedule 6, just talks about uh, mm -hmm. when you injure a person, yeah. do you, you offer them first aid and then you report. Mm -hmm. So that also talks about it. So at this point, you, by you mentioning that, mm -hmm. it is not a question of sufficiency of the law. Yeah. We have the laws. Yes. We are simply poorly implementing. Yeah. Now to then again go back to what you said, mm -hmm. is that everyone has a role to play. True. Now, let's go to the organizers. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, mm -hmm. you have to understand exactly what it is that you're supposed yeah. to do, mm -hmm. especially if we're looking at lawful protests, right? Yeah. So that you are covered by the law as yes. is. We have seen that uh, if there are any injuries or retaliatory attacks in terms of arrests of, say, organizers or protesters, in a lawful protest, mm -hmm. courts have been very strict and straightforward towards protecting them. Yeah. No one is seeking to muzzle the right to protest, especially in the courts. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you're within the law in the sense that you have a notification. Mm -hmm. And we're repeating again because this is something that is going to be used today, mm -hmm. that you have a notification that has been received mm -hmm. and that you, the people who you are going with on that particular procession mm -hmm. know that they are not armed. Okay. Once you are armed, you're not a protester. You mm -hmm. are a rioter. Mm -hmm. A, a protester is a person who's seeking to send out the information, okay. but through the legal channels. Oh. Because there are cleavages that, you know, allow for, you know, dissent mm -hmm. in certain mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. But if the structures that are available for us to communicate to the government mm -hmm. do not work, we will go and protest. But even there, mm -hmm. we are supposed to be guided. Okay. So once you are guided, then the duty bearer, who is a police officer, mm -hmm. knows exactly what to do. Right. in terms. So the general rule is you don't use force okay. on protesters. Okay. And, and, and protests happen in a continuum. Mm -hmm. So there are certain nuances that we need to be alive to as yeah. organizers and as protesters. Mm -hmm. As a trained officer, mm -hmm. you know that. Mm -hmm. But we can still do more towards capacity building them. Right. The, the guidance on, on, on the use of less lethal force in law enforcement, just, I mean, it was, it was in 2020, sometime mm -hmm. in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, the Istanbul Protocol, 2022. Right. So they're pretty fresh in terms of you know updating because mm -hmm. they look at the dynamics of the current uh, society mm -hmm. but i think continuously we can capacity build uh, the law enforcement officers mm -hmm. we can also talk to the organizers however mm -hmm. the state must be aware that there is no protest you can hate so much okay so that you vilify these particular protesters okay and human lives are way too expensive we, we've true. paid enough i mean yeah, yeah. O over time we have paid enough we have paid enough and okay. in in closing mm -hmm. i i think the death blood and tears then just shows you mm -hmm. that we need to do positive human rights reporting mm. positive in the sense that we talk about the legal wins that come from prosecuting yeah. rogue officers mm -hmm who have then maybe injured or killed or maimed uh, people during protests. During protest, yeah. We have beautiful precedents. Okay. We don't talk about them. It's the same way anti-government protests get airwaves here yeah. and we forget any other protests that you know we really don't care about. Yeah. So we call upon you as journalists mm -hmm. to help us in, in continuously speaking about these things, yeah. creating educational content. Mm -hmm. We call upon doctors. We work very closely with doctors. Mm -hmm. um, we use forensic documentation mm -hmm. science and the law mm -hmm. to dissect issues of torture okay. uh, so we are hoping that issue will be resolved yes. but as you talk about civil society mm -hmm. organizers mm -hmm. even journalists we'll you are part of this game <laughs> <That's laughs> <You are. true. laughs> like i say all of us right all, all of us. us really have a role to play okay i'm told our time is far much spent but really we cannot end the conversation without having you yeah. uh, talk about the recommendations yes. uh, that are on the on the on the report yeah yeah so th thank you as we conclude i want to say a couple of things yeah. one we really need to help survivors victims find closure okay that is key for us mm -hmm. closure comes by acknowledging mm -hmm. that a violation occurred mm -hmm. and then uh, ensuring that they access mm -hmm. the requisite services mm -hmm. whatever that service looks like number two is um and I, and we'd want to acknowledge mm -hmm. that uh, imlu for example is a convener of the police reforms working group oh, yeah. and uh, we work with over 25 civil society organizations mm -hmm. under the human rights mm -hmm. uh, you know sector mm -hmm. uh, we've worked very closely with entities like the National Police Service, mm -hmm. um, Correctional Services, IPOA, IAU, mm -hmm. ODPP, you know, name it. Mm -hmm. and, and there's opportunity <coughs> for strengthening the capacity of duty bearers, mm -hmm. strengthening the capacity of law enforcement officers mm -hmm. to deliver on their mandate yeah. without 
violation of human rights. That's critical. Yeah. But we acknowledge that we have a, a working relationship which can be strengthened, mm -hmm. um, and, and we are there. Mm -hmm. We are there. The civil society is committed mm -hmm. to working to resolve the issues. Mm -hmm. Coming to what is happening today and what is on the table mm -hmm. uh, with the strike, with the impasse, mm -hmm. I really want to you know, emphasize that who is suffering? It is our children. Yeah. It is our sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. It is our mothers and fathers. Mm -hmm. We must find a solution. Absolutely. An impasse is not a solution. It yeah. cannot stay. Yeah. And um, the demands are there. The government must find a solution, and it will not be tomorrow. It needs to be today. Mm -hmm. We need people are dying. People are dying. People True. are yeah. suffering. Mm. There are no health facilities that are functional. Mm. So imagine when your sick brother mm -hmm. needs attention. Mm -hmm. What's happening? You know. Yeah. So there has to be urgent attention. Okay. And finally, to say that. Um, the Constitution, the Convention Against Torture, mm -hmm. uh, the, our own act, every of these international, regional, national instruments mm -hmm. provide mm -hmm. for the right mm -hmm. to peaceful Protests. protest, yes. assembly, <laughs> association, yeah. voice. Okay. The only way citizens can use, uh, can, can, can contribute and participate in democracy mm -hmm. is through the use of voice. Mm -hmm. Mostly, and, and within this context, it is brought up through a protest. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where they gather, you associate and you, 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 you bring forth your, your petitions yeah. or, or point out a grievance or even demand accountability. Mm -hmm. Let us respect that and let us make sure that it is one of the models we are the mediums we're using to ensure that our voices are heard. Absolutely. And we really hope that the next time we're talking about or hearing the word protest, we, we don't get scared because yes. we'll get to that level yes. of understanding what it's not a negative connotation. Like it's actually just yes. a process of getting our that. voices. I hear that. Yes. Thank you so much, Wangeshi. And allow us to end the show on that positive note. And I really hope that we'll have a resolution <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, like Wangeshi said, today, not tomorrow, yeah. today. Yes, so, so, yeah, yes. we really, really hope so. So that, again, you don't continue to be on the streets while patients are suffering because yeah. again you know that yeah. they really really need uh, your services all right yeah. so Wangeshi uh, Grace Kahuri who's the executive director independent medical legal um, unit that is uh, in blue uh, Isabella Obara, Technical Lead, Litigation and Legal Advice from IMBLU as well, and Dr. Dabji Atella, Secretary General KMPDU. Thank you so much for coming by this morning. Insightful conversation, and we sure hope that we'll continue with this conversation, so, you know, so that we continue to empower one another as far as what exactly <laughs> Article 37 of the Constitution says, and this is as far as peaceful uh, protest uh, concerned. So have yourselves a lovely day ahead, uh, and enjoy the rest of your viewing season. Thank you.